Hey guys, I'm here with Max Gallish of Coin Change. Max, how you doing, buddy? Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so very much for coming on. Well, I want to talk a little bit about you, and I also want to talk a little bit about your business. Um, so, you know, there's this concept that I've been uh, tackling a lot over the last couple of years of the whole idea of, you know, the importance of the person and the founder and the CEO behind a business. So you've got a great company here. I want to talk a little bit about what you guys do. But first, I want to start off by talking a little bit about you, why you founded the business, some of the things you've learned uh, through your tenure here working in uh, founding companies and working with being on the board of other companies, etc. So let me ask you this. Why did you found Coin Change? We're going to talk about Coin Change, but why did you feel the desire to do that? Let me reflect a little bit on your statement of the founder and the importance, right? I think it's more about the culture. Right, so it all goes top down, and when you're very small, when you're one person or a co-founder, when you're two people, and you have a limited budget, you have a limited time, you have limited resources, you want to make sure that you align yourself with the people that you don't have to argue every day, right? They're aligned under the same vision. They go towards the same principles in life and in business. So I would say it's not only founder, it's kind of a reflection of a first 10 people in the business that join the team and put all their energy and belief into a certain subject, right? So that, and then it cascades down when you have more people. And if you have less management and more execution, and even when you grow, you probably stay up to that culture and a certain, certain vision. So founder is very, very important, but there are very extrovert founders that build incredible businesses because of their ethics, because of their principles, and because of their culture. So, the founding principles of coin change, uh, it was, was pretty simple. Uh, it, we, we, we went by transparency in the first place. I mean, a little bit of a story when I was buying crypto in 2016, 2017, I was doing it through brokers, through kind of OTC guys on Telegram, right? So, they quote you, they give you a price, you have to take it or live it, you have five seconds or something like that. It was pretty comprehensive process and it wasn't transparent. So at the end of the day when you do a purchase, you roll it back, you check Canadian dollar. I, I live in Canada, right? So, so you check Canadian dollar again, US dollar, because everything is benchmarked against, against US in crypto, right? You see there is a spread, then you see there is a bad rate. So I thought, why not to build something that's very transparent, right? So I was using TransferWise. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the wise.com. It's like a cross-border platform out of Estonia right now, traded in London, great business, love it. So that had a very clear calculator of your Forex transactions that mm -hmm. you do cross-border, and it gave you all the rates and all the, all the fees that you pay for. So we wanted to build something like that, but for buying crypto. That was kind of original vision and principle. But going back to the culture, the, the transparency, the simplicity, and the trust was like three principles behind the product and the team. So you align yourself with the people who believe in transparency, who believe in trust, you have to trust them, right? And they believe in simplicity. So explaining complex subjects in a simple manner. So the premise of, that was the story of coin change. And then we, we actually did make a few pivots along the line, but started developing our DeFi platform in 2019. I think that's why most companies fail that do, and most companies succeed that do, is that the ones that succeed know the founding principles, or at least the principles maybe that they pivoted to that ended up allowing the company to become very successful, and the ones that fail are the ones that forgot it. So simplicity, transparency, and trust, those are the three you said, right? That's right. I think that if a business fully understands those and is able to articulate those, and that's something that's going to drive them to success. So you have obviously had a lot of success. You guys have incredible returns. Can you tell us a little bit about the business model that you guys are running? Yeah. So. The business model also evolves with the product. Okay, so this market is very nascent. Overall, the crypto market and DeFi specifically is a very nascent market. So we're kind of a trailblazers, I would say, in, in a lot of things like regulatory, financial operations, right? Um, even marketing, right? How do you position that business in front of the clients, right? So they understand, right? So there's a lot of, I would say, like there's no framework you can play by. It's not like you're building another neobank or you're building a, a car dealership, right? So it's, it's, it's a really nascent new market. Uh, so the business model evolves, right? So we do something very simple. So we try to do a dollar 20 out of a dollar for a customer, right? But we do it pretty comprehensive because we're using this new paradigm that's called DeFi, right? And you can provide liquidity into different pools, like staking pools, lending pools, liquidity pools, and get paid for that. They gotta get paid fees, part of this fees that are generated 
on that peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, right? So as any new market, there's a lot of risk for a regular customer to go and try to, try to manage that, their own assets, I don't know, where their own liquidity into those pools. So we try to minimize the risk, pre-qualifying those opportunities. We try to minimize the transaction fees with us, you pay zero, there is no fees to participate, right? If you go directly to the DeFi yourself through a MetaMask, you'll pay a transaction fees on Ether, Polygon, whatever chain you're gonna use. And your yield exposure will be to a single protocol. With us, we distribute that across 30 pro 15 protocols and 30 pools today. So we minimize your risk, we get your fees to zero, and we maximize your yield. We're kind of a, you're in finance on steroids, if you wanna put it that way, because you're in finance as a protocol, they're on chain, they have commoditized strategies because they're all public, right? Public, public knowledge is not, not an IP knowledge, right? So our, our, our strategies that we use to maximize the yield on a certain protocols is our own knowledge, is a private knowledge. So we don't really distribute that. So we're off-chain, centralized access to multi-chain earning opportunities in DeFi. That's incredible. Well, let me ask you this, because you, you talked a little bit about simplicity. What you just said, the way that you guys work seems very simple for the customer. A great entrepreneur is somebody who understands a problem and how big of that problem is, and then they find a solution to it that their customer is going to be able to use in a way that is appealing to them. So how important is that tenant that you talked about with simplicity with your product, CoinChange? So I won't say it's simple what I've said just now. It's pretty pro 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 probably, I'm not using the, uh, simple enough terms. But I would say crypto overall is, is, a, is, a, is a comprehensive uh, abstract for, for, for the regular customer, right? And uh, DeFi is 10 times the general crypto Very understanding, complex. right, of Bitcoin and Ether, right, and the underlying infrastructure and mechanics. So, but what we mimic right now in our application is a pretty simple user-friendly interface. So you have to download an app, you take a selfie, you make a picture of your ID, you have your account, right? You have your wallets, you have your USD account, so you can transfer the funds, right? With one click, deploy it to the high yield account and start earning. You have activity page where you see daily payouts on compounding basis, right? So that's it, and uh, I think it's a very, we were talking a lot about, okay, let's, let's probably try to go into the well simple DeFi route when we aggregate it in the portfolio is kind of an ETF type and show it to the customers, but it's not really what we do, right? So we optimize your yield through a technology layer that we've built across five blockchains, right? And now 15 protocols and those strategies that we did for a simple, for those protocols and pools to move liquidity between them, right? Sometimes we'll take the LP token and stake it and then it goes back in kind on that daily basis. So there's a combination of instruments, there's a combination of tools across different protocols. Interesting. I think the reason I asked that, and I think that was a wonderful explanation for that, is because, you know, we, in the traditional financial space, there's plenty of people that will, you know, manage money for you, grow it, and you can select different uh, types of accounts. But that's not something that's actually very prevalent in cryptocurrency. And where it is, it's either in the DeFi space and very complicated, and the average person can't figure it out. Or if it's centralized, then it might not be very simple. It sounds like you have a very simple process. So would you say that's one of the biggest selling points of coin change? Or if not, what is it? So I would say there is... Um, what we hear from our customers, right? Because we can think that the selling point is one value add. So it's all about the solution, I agree with you. You mentioned before that, like I can talk about the mechanics, underline the mechanics for an hour and it's not gonna solve your problem, right? So the problem is very simple. How do I get access to that new paradigm that exists? Everybody reads a newspaper, crazy yields, a lot of opportunity, a lot of scam, a lot of risk. How you mitigate all that, right? So you'll find guys like us and you'll say, okay, those guys are professionals. They have research team, they have risk team. They, they have execution, they have AUM, they have other customers, they have trust, they have transparency, right? Why don't, why don't I try transferring my assets and be part of that new DeFi ecosystem through an intermediary, right? Like us. So who is a compliant, right? And gives you access. You don't need to manage your keys. I understand there is like your keys, not, not your keys, not your crypto, but there's a lot of people out there who is not really capable of managing that process, right? It's even more risky for them to do that rather than just rely on some centralized party like us. So simplicity is not the only selling point, right? It's not the only, it's not, it's based on the customer. Right now we see different segments of customers. Some customers love, let's say, no lockups, right? Because it's all the liquidity is on the chain. We don't lend it out, we don't trade on it, we don't let replicate in any way. It's always on the chain in the pools, right? So we can pull it out at any time. We always control that liquidity, 
It's always ours. So there's no counterparty risk. It's like, I'm going to lend it to you. We have a contract. You walk away. I have to enforce the contract. Go to a lawyer, right? There's nothing like that. Really? It's all on the chain. Mm -hmm. Chain actually already settles and guarantees that. Mm -hmm. So our assets is always there. We can always pull it back. So for a lot of clients, it's a big, big factor when they have no lockups. Liquidity is available immediately. So the second factor that we hear as well is compounding, right? Because it's different earn every day because it's based on those fees that are generated on those pools and are distributed back to us right, as, a, as a participant in the market. So yield varies every day, right? So it's good for people to see that they compound daily, right? So it's another selling point that I see some, some of them like. And third of it is I don't really support much of the speculation angle. I'm more of a holder, not a hodler, you can say in another way. Uh, you can do both on our platform, right? So, so you can actually move your Bitcoin into a stable, stable into the Bitcoin, and still keep earning. Hmm, interesting. Because the swaps are available across those assets that are represented on the platform. Hmm. Interesting, that's really important. Well, let me ask you this, let me ask you one final question, because I love everything you've just said, but I know something that people really resonate with are you know, the actual users, the actual customers, and their testimonies. That's one of the things that we found very successful. What is the most inspiring testimony that you've had from one of your customers over the last couple of years as you've been growing? So, yeah, I just met I just met one of our customers Great, earlier yeah. or earlier today. It's a good feeling, meeting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that he's coming. I mean, uh, he was one of the first customers, obviously, and I, I, I'm trying to talk to customers twice a week right now. Amazing. Right, so hear them, listen to the feedback. It's very important to be nimble in this space. I mean, because regulatory regime changes, right? So there's competitive landscape changes. Uh, New customers are coming into the space, right? So you have to know and feel, like on your fingertips, what's the market? So I try to talk to them. But this guy was like one of the very early adopters of our product and a big supporter. He just, he's, I think he's transferring about four or five million to the platform. Wow. He's a great customer. Uh, we won't name him, but uh, he's been in the space since 20, 2012. So he, was, he, he came to know Ethereum when he was in, in the Amsterdam, Matt Vitalik when he was doing a pitch about releasing Ethereum. So it was a, an Amsterdam blockchain conference. So that guy told me, that customer, he said, listen, I could do it myself, okay? I understand the markets, I know crypto, I'm a big believer, but why would I? It's so comprehensive, it's so comprehensive. Like you have to learn it, you have to look at it all the time, you have to manage it. And I love DeFi, he, he, he is moving some from some other from some other players in the space who are generating EL the other way, not like we do through DeFi. So he wants to have exposure to DeFi market. That was his main thinking, is that I read about it, I tried it myself, I poked around it, and I found you guys, right? And I, I don't believe in it, transferred some funds, and I'm happy for the last 10 months how you guys developed as a business, where are you guys at right now, and where were you like a year ago when he started with us? We launched the product last summer. So we worked on it for two years, since 2019 till 2021, and we launched it last summer. So we've been paying yield like 10 months. It's 10 months is nothing compared to the traditional finance, but it's pretty good compared to DeFi as a market. So he's been there with us for like close to a year, right? So and he, a great customer, always gives the feedback, but his moving point was like, I can do it myself. I'm in the space since 2012, but I trust you guys can do it better, more effective, cheaper, and it's just less headache. Sounds like you know him pretty well. Is he the kind of guy that would tell you like it is if he didn't like something? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, that's, that's one of the culture pieces as well in our yeah. business. Yeah, that's important. That's, the feedback loop is always important. You have to make sure that you get it from the customers, you get it from your own employees, you get it from your partners, right? It saves time, saves energy, gets you, gets you there, and you have to be able to accept it, right? It builds trust. It builds build trust, otherwise. exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, Max, you guys, you guys obviously have a very great thing going. Are there any final thoughts you have for our audience? You know, when we started looking at the DeFi in 2019, it was about 70, 70, 80 million dollars in TVL. <laughs> so right now it's 280 billion, right? 250 billion, I don't know. It's, it's always blockchains. But I think that, you know, and we're such a tiny piece in the overall global financial markets that less, like more energy has to be put into the building communities, right? And to look into the influ looking into the right influencers, good channels, education. You guys are doing great. I mean, taking that to the general public, showing them the product, showing them the entrepreneurs, different different opinions, and 
I think this is this is very very important because it's still a very nascent market. There's a lot of mistrust, a lot of a lot of bad actors as well. So the qualifications and pre-qualifications from from trustful channels and uh, ambassadors per se, right? It's it's very important to build that general adoption. Yeah. So thanks for what you're doing, guys. It's been great. I appreciate it. We love it. Thank you so very much, Max. Thank you. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely consider subscribing because we're trying to help you become financially free in these cryptocurrency markets. And also consider following us on Twitter at CryptoJeb for more updates on the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Peace.